<laughs> I took some street photos with this one today. It's a Hasselblad with a 250 sonar lens. Really a conversation starter. But this was not what I was planning to talk to you today. Mm, had something else on my mind. Do you remember this song? It goes something like this. Yeah, you gotta be of a certain age to remember that. That's an old Rod Stewart song. I think he released that in 71. And it has one of the most untuned guitars, acoustic guitars in the beginning that I've ever heard. The song is called Every Picture Tells a Story. And we as photographers, we often use picture tells a story metaphor when we explain a picture that we like or qualities of a good picture. I think Rod Stewart was wrong though. I don't think every picture tells a story. At least I got many pictures that don't tell any kind of narrative or any stories whatsoever. Um, but there's something in that saying, even though I think we use it pretty casually and we just use it as a kind of a sort of a cheap slogan that we just throw out, you know. My picture tells a story. Anywho, I, I wanted to dig a bit deeper. I, I thought there's something in it. And I thought that, uh, what if I try to analyze a bit more, what do we mean by telling a story? What are the ingredients of a good story? And how would I apply that into my pictures? So I asked artificial intelligence, like that seems to be the way to start almost anything today. Um, I asked Chat, uh, GPT, what are the ingredients of a good story? I didn't mention that it's about photography, but just generally speaking. And the AI came with seven topics. A good story has a character, a conflict, a plot, a dialogue, a setting, a theme, and a point of view. So then I thought, okay, uh, kind of makes sense, but what would that mean in a context of a photograph. How could I use those seven elements to analyze my photograph? So I took a few of these pictures, you know, I got these are all leftovers from my previous exhibition. Uh, some of these I didn't put on the wall and some of these I made uh, a print that was slightly different and I thought that fit better there. So it's a random collection of pictures. Uh, but let's let's take one here and go through the list and see how it might land. Uh, let's take this pitch as a starting point. So the first thing you gotta have is a character. I think there are character or characters in this picture. There's this bus and there are these people waiting for the bus. So there are clearly players now in this story. The second one was a conflict. Yeah, I think conflict can be visual conflict in a pitch. And or then it can be the subject matter conflict. And there is a certain visual conflict between the white snow and dark elements. Also these poles, this bus going to another direction. And if I stretch my imagination, I can also see a conflict of bus leaving the bus stop and these people being left behind. Yeah, I know that's a stretch, but... Anywho, um, number third, a plot. A simple, 
straightforward plot that moves quickly and does not waste time with unnecessary details. Unnecessary details are, by the way, really bad. I don't like them at all in my pictures. So here, bus is leaving, these people are left behind. That's the plot. Uh, a dialogue. I think in a picture the dialogue, how I would see it, is an, is an interaction between my characters, my subjects. Some kind of a, a relationship between them that is dynamic. And I think the dialogue here happens between the bus that is leaving these people left behind. There's also maybe a dialogue between um, visually between once again these poles and, and other things and, and, and so there, there's a tension between these also a, a little bit of a visual tension that I think could act as a dialogue setting number five there's a clear setting here it happens uh, this is uh, in, in downtown. There's a city view. There's a snowstorm. Bus is leaving. Um, the city view in a snowstorm is the setting. Then the theme. Uh, what AI says: a strong underlying theme that adds depth and meaning to the story. I think the theme here is really a harsh winter weather, and people still going on with their lives, even though the conditions are pretty hard. And there's also a theme maybe of leaving and staying and so on and so forth. Then the last one was a point of view. I think in a good storytelling, the, whoever tells the story is a significant player in that story, because a good storyteller teller leaves his or her mark into the story. I mean the same story told by a boring person, a boring engineer versus a talented storyteller is a different story, even though the main ingredients would be the same. So the same here is that if, if there was another photographer next to me taking a picture here about the same subject, I think we would come up with a totally different picture. And that's the point of view that we have. It's our storytelling. It might, you might call it also my style as a photographer. So as you can see, I mean, you can use those elements of a, of a good story when you analyze a picture. So then I went a little bit further and I, I thought about like, what are my challenges? What are my main things that are missing from my pictures? How do I feel today? And I think there are two elements that I struggle with. Conflict and dialogue. Um, I, let me show you another picture where I think I have those figured out pretty nicely. There's a conflict here. There's a person going to the, to the void and, and a lonely person, almost like vulnerable person. And then these buildings, almost threatening buildings, leaning over him. There's a conflict here in my liking. Also the, the dark buildings and white areas. That's a conflict. Also I think there's a dialogue. This person is interacting visually with the surroundings extremely strongly in my liking. So I think this picture is where I am more kind of fairly happy with my dialogue and conflict. But then let's take um, another example. Here's an, uh, a character, this tram. And there's certain kind of conflict too, I mean, between white and dark. At least a visual conflict. But there's not a lot of dialogue. I don't think this tram really interacts with its surroundings. It is there, the surroundings are sort of there to give the context, but it's not interaction. And there are no other actors in this picture with whom this tram might have a dialogue. Follow me? I'm not saying this is a bad picture. I kind of like this picture, but if it's lacking something, it's lacking the 
dynamic dialogue that I think is more present in this pitch. By the way, if you look at this pitch where I, I said I like this with the dialogue and the, the uh, conflict, um, here is another pitch, where did I put it? Uh, with the same ingredients, a lonely person and the city view. But this does not have the dialogue. Let me show you what I mean. This picture, the person has a visual dialogue with the buildings. At least in my life. This person has no dialogue with anything. He's just standing there by himself, not interacting with anything. Not even with his surroundings. Also, there's no conflict. Here's a conflict between the person and the buildings. Here is no conflict. There's no conflict in this speech. Just a person waiting. I mean, it has some other goodies. I mean, there's a very strong uh, setting and a theme is strong. But as I said, I struggle with conflict and dialogue and those are missing from this. They are missing even more in this speech that has no conflict, that has no dialogue whatsoever. I mean, there is a nice texture and there is some compositional aspects, but there is no conflict, there's no dialogue. And I find, you know, this kind of analysis actually pretty nice. It gives me now a new tool to look into my pictures and maybe after all, if you, if you really go deeper and analyze pictures, maybe there's some truth in the in the idea of a good picture telling a story. But as I said, Rod Stewart obviously didn't know what he was talking about. Not every picture tells a story. <laughs> See you later. Thank you.